Hello, here we are. Uh, we're going to color our cornucopia in. I, I've already done a little bit of cover, coloring, and um, so we'll just show you how to finish the rest. Um, make sure you're using good quality markers and make sure that you do your edging um, and color the entire project in. So let's get started. Uh, we were coloring in the cornucopia. Um, try to use a bright color and a darker color. You could use two bright colors too. Um, but I guess we're going to go on to the pumpkin here. So we're edging. And this is a orange. Let's see, it's called a tiger orange. And this color is a little darker than the red. I'm sorry, than the orange. The orange is orange, obviously. Uh, the tiger orange is like a red orange. So here I'm showing you edging, okay? The point goes towards the edge. Notice that I'm switching the paper around and then I'm pressing down on about a 45 degree angle and using circular motions so that you can get a good high quality coloring. Um, so if you notice there are no white spaces left when I'm done, okay? And take your time. There's a little bit of white space down there. I'll probably come back and pick it up. So. Uh, sandy tan I use for the stem and probably put a little texture in there with some brown. Put a little brown in the um, in that gourd and a little bit of brown here and there in the banana. A little shade, a little extra shade. You can do it if you want, you don't have to, it's just a little extra. Uh, helps it make a little nicer, look a little nicer. So, all right, we've got our edging again, and our apple back there. If you notice, I have some little highlights in the front um, around the apple, and uh, that's basically I, it's kind of like a curved triangle. Uh, kind of gives it a glare. So. got our orange in the background again I'm edging turning my paper you want your hand to be in that position that works best for you so twist that paper around see how I edge point the tip towards the black line it's not outlining it's edging okay good and moving on put some dots in there it's really important that you don't pound your sharpie you just just a little dab here and there you don't want big dots it's just a little texture for the orange I'm gonna go in the back here color some of the trees in I did some yellow so it's kind of a fall scene. I'll probably add some different colors onto that also. Um, we're going to fast forward this pretty soon because we're getting to the cornucopia part. Just be careful when you're when you're doing this. If you take a look at uh, the cornucopia, it's, a, it's like a checkered pattern. Um, just remember that you don't want two colors flat up against each other and start from one side and go to the other. Here I'm coloring in um, a tree again, and uh, the other tree I put a little different color in there just to show some shading. Uh, you could use multiple colors for this. You could do an orange and a red if you wanted to, a pink and a red, um, maybe even a red and a violet. Um, it's up to you. Uh, if you want to experiment on a different piece of paper, you could always do that also. Uh, so. Here we go. I did a little orange in this one. Okay, so I think we're getting to the point where I'm going to fast forward this, otherwise we're going to be here for a long time. Okay, 
So I stopped it here because I did a brown. I would recommend not doing a different color here. I think this was a bad decision. So just continue to use your red or whatever color you're using. Think about the colors you can use. There's yellows and oranges and orange and gray and brown and orange and tons of different ideas. So, um, but I just wanted to slow it down here because we have, um, I would say it's a little mistake here. So I'm using some uh, green here and this is like a guana green maybe. Or maybe it's a regular green. Yeah, it's a darker green. Just putting some highlights with some darker green in. tree back there so I'm gonna fast forward this again otherwise we'll be here pretty long I'm gonna show you how we do the background and, and then we'll move on from there and I'm using another sandy tan for um, the top of that eggplant and then I'm going to uh, probably put some highlights in there or shades um, so just just a reminder kids make sure that you're using good markers um, I can't stress that enough so um, don't throw them away or anything because we can use the adult ones. Um, so I'm just going around and I'm putting some more highlights and shades in. Um, and there's a little spot up by the orange where it's showing a little bit and that's where I'm going to go ahead and do my... Um, I'll put some darker colors back there but I'm working on the mountains here. You can use gray, you could use brown um, and you can actually go over it twice on one side and, and it, can, it will look shaded. Um, but you know with with how much time we have i would say let's if you have time do it if not no big deal so i'm going to stop it here and fast forward a little bit Here I'm putting another layer of that color over the bottom to try to darken it up a little bit. And then I'm going to add some shade here. And like I said, this is just uh, extra if you want to try it. So I just took a dark green and went underneath, put some shades in certain areas. Um, sometimes if you find a dull marker, it actually will blend into the um, project there. So um, try it out and I'll uh, let me know how it goes. So. Take your time. Don't feel like you need to finish this today.